First off, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Um, it's it's a pleasant morning, not too cold, not too hot. Um, hopefully umulan maya-maya so that I don't want I don't need to water my plants. I'd like to thank um Dr. JC Gonzalez for inviting me and my team to be part of this big work. And I understand that um um the the thought of looking into hydrogeology as uh, part of this project came in a little bit late into the program but we're still very grateful for the opportunity to be uh, working with you so um the colleagues that uh, i initially connived and uh, fooled into working with me are um, Dr. Jen Padrones from CFNR, IRNR, and uh, one of our new hires at, UP, uh, at CESAM, Dr. Juan Miguel Gotana, uh, Dr. Lucel Cui, and Dr. Jack Perob are um, faculty members of CESAM. And Dr. Nico Perov is a faculty member of uh, Bordeaux University in France. And um, the six of us will, I don't know how many, two, four, six, seven of us will try to contribute um, data on cave hydrology for the different caves uh, already identified by the project. So, okay. So this is going to be the outline of my presentation, just very quickly, what is hydrogeology, the objectives of the work, the methods that will be employed, and the target output. So first, hydrogeology. Well, hydrogeology is essentially the science, a part, a branch of geology that looks at uh, water behavior. Um, well, uh, I wrote in caves already, but uh, water behavior underground. And uh, when we talk of underground, there are different interactions that actually uh, go on. And it could be just water passing through the pores or passing through pores and then also diluting the materials that make up the rocks. Um, and then they eventually, all the waters eventually end up in springs or streams or lakes and they find their way back into the oceans. So um, in a normal non-karstic system, um, water would flow where the holes in the rocks are interconnected. So it's a play of porosity and permeability. And um, it's fairly easy to predict um, well, not easy, but it's fairly easier to predict how and where water would flow. And with water uh, would be the contaminants and other minerals be, that can be um, dissolved in water. However, water and rock interaction is different when the rocks are composed of uh, materials that can be easily dissolved in water. So these areas are um, what we call, uh, what eventually would develop into karstic systems. So this is a type of landscape where bedrock is dissolved, creating sinkholes, sinking streams, or streams that um, disappear, and uh, caves, which is the interest of this uh, research, and um, springs where water come out, from the ground and other uh, such uh, geologic characteristics or features. Now, generally, as mentioned earlier, most um, uh, caves or karst systems are associated with soluble rock types such as limestone, marble, and gypsum. In the Philippines, we have more of uh, limestone and marble, not, not so much of gypsum. And a typical karstic landscape forms when much water is falling on the surface. So much water, what does that mean? It means karstic systems develop more rapidly in tropical environments. For example, here in the Philippines, there are, of course, um, caves even in temperate uh, regions, but the rate at which they develop and the way 
water behaves through those systems are a little bit different than in um, tropical areas where there's really a lot of water coming in each season. So how do they come in to, uh, through the rocks? They, the water permits through the subsurface, through cracks, fractures, or existing holes, or even just through a simple permission. Water travels underground, sometimes for long distances, for big caves, and then it is discharged through springs or the outlets, um, many of which are what we call the cave entrances. How do, this is a uh, cartoon. I was really happy that it's actually um, by a Filipino cave diver enthusiast, and he illustrated how caves are. Uh, form for a uniform area. For example, this is all limestone. The rocks here would be uh, probably all limestone. So water permits from the ground and enters cracks and reacts with the limestone. And limestone is calcium carbonate plus water. You do the balancing. So what happens is that um, some of the uh, materials come out in solution, others as ox, um, uh, gases. Um, if the high, if the water table, if the water level in the rivers is an indication of how high the water table is, then that's up to that level where the solution underground can happen. And water can persist to exist in these holes for uh, much longer even after water in the rivers have started to subside. But over time, these rivers will also run out of water or try to undercut the topography. And so what will happen is that there will be some portions of the caves that are dry, while others would be um, flooded with water. And um, eventually, these upper caves that uh, would usually remain dry for a long time would develop those um, Speleothems that uh, a lot of people would like to study for climate change uh, purposes. There are um, different uh, cave types, and um, they, the, the, the typing can be defined based on how they formed or what the materials uh, make them up. So, um, in terms of cave type, uh, of in, in first order is a uh, solution cave. So these are the ones that are formed by the interaction of water with the lithology or the rock types. So merong epigene and hypogene. Epigene is a surface. So those that formed uh, in the Vado zone or by uh, phreatic or water interactions at the surface. Hypogene would be associated with uh, geothermal activity. So pag may bulkan, minsan nagkakaroon din ng mga caves. And dissolution by sulfuric acids. And uh, this one is kind of uh, not very common, but we have uh, some in the Philippines. They're, they're quite uh, short, short na ano lang because it's, um, we know them to be short only because we have not really explored them too much because it's, uh, these are dangerous zones. Um, mechanical weathering and erosion also forms caves. Um, in the Philippines, we don't have winter, so frost weathering is not so much. And, but frost weathering essentially has to do with um, the shrinking and uh, expansion of rocks. When water comes in and then winter happens, water expands when it turns to ice. And then when spring comes, magme melt, but the expansion would stay that way. And then the following year, another expansion, hanggang lumaki ng lumaki yung butas. Of course, spherical weathering caves have to do with um, surficial processes also. Um, sometimes when an area is in a mountainous, uh, is a mountainous area and there are a lot of rocks. Sometimes gravity, well, gravity is the constant force uh, all around us. And sometimes it would cause uh, rocks to slide. And when these rocks slide, sometimes holes are left out and eventually they would form uh, caves. 
So all the other types are listed here, but I will not go into them because um, from my understanding, most of the caves in the Calabarzon area were formed by solution activities. Oops. All right. So um, when we talk of hydrology, so hydrogeology, so this is the science of uh, looking at the occurrence, distribution, and movement of water below the Earth's surface. So it's essentially underground water that we want to study when we talk of hydrogeology. But our understanding of that would be incomplete until we understand what we have at the surface. So for example, for cave hydrogeology, it's important to understand meron bang allogenic recharge system, meaning the rocks are not soluble. Therefore, they will not likely form the, the caves, but they can be conduits or they can be the watershed or water catchment that would deliver the water towards the um, calcareous or limestone area where cave formation is occurring. Autogenic recharge areas are areas where the rocks are composed of soluble materials and when rain comes down, the water infiltrates through the ground and helps with uh, cave formation. So autogenic recharge areas are those that are fed by rain. So um, when, we, when you look through the literature of what hydrogeologic characterization means, madame, it, it's actually a whole gamut of um, problems that you can look into. And as I understand, there is also another um, DOST-funded project on karst, um, karst geology, uh, but they focus on two or three caves not related to the ones that we are looking at in Calabarzon. And they're not only looking at caves, they're looking at the whole landscape, looking at the, the whole uh, karst uh, system. So, um, dun po papasok yung lim uh, delimiting work na that, that we are going to do because um, uh, we cannot answer all these questions and we're not going to look at the entire karst uh, topography. We are going to focus on the caves themselves. So, um, but even by just looking at caves, and dami pa ding, um, uh, scientific problems that are... Uh, are uh, wanting to be answered. For example, ano yung area ng cross, uh, karst drainage basin? What is the characteristic of the aquifer? Ano yung klase ng mga bato that make them up? What is the recharge characteristic? Allogenic ba? Atoge uh, autogenic ba? At ano yung conduits? And then, um, are there matrix, matrix, matrices or fracture systems through which the hydraulic activity is, is um, being facilitated? How does the conduit system respond to fluxes of water? Or is there coupling between conduit and fracturing? And then there are there's more specific, very, um, very, very problem specific. Um, researches such as drip water hydrology and paleothems. So looking at um, yung minimeasure nila yung gaano ka bilis ang drip ng water mula dun sa mga stalactites and then measuring them and then um, associating them with fluxes of water on the surface. And then of course uh, the bigger uh, question is um, Yung water budget, how much water is coming into the watershed, and what is the quality of the water. So for our uh, work, we would like to uh, confine the, the problems that we would like to answer into four major groups. So first is defining and characterizing the area of the whole karst drainage system. And then second, characterizing the watershed aquifer, the rocks themselves in terms of geologic materials, their origin. And then uh, looking at the recharge characterization, allogenic ba, autogenic ba, at ano yung conduits. 
and then looking at water budget and their quality. So in terms of our methods, um, we would like to propose, we have, well, actually we have proposed that um, in terms of looking at the car's drainage uh, basin, we'll employ mostly mapping, remote sensing, GIS work, um, because we need to see where, where the sinkholes are, where those fracture systems are, kasi doon dumadaan yung tubig. And then characterize the watershed aquifer through geologic studies such as mapping, stratigraphic work, looking at the relationship of the rocks, in anong layers yung um, soluble, meron bang non-soluble, at saka uh, nanghaharang ba siya ng water, ano yung petrographic characteristic ng mga bato na yon. In terms of recharge characterization, we need to identify whether the cave is being fed by allogenic or by autogenic recharge and then looking at their conduit characterization. So again, this is mostly mapping, delineating boundaries, and approximating thicknesses of um, layers, of uh, formational layers, and determining the pathways of uh, water. And uh, lastly, we'd like to know um, the actual water quality in these um, caves because as I understand, many of these caves are being developed for tourism. And um, it's very difficult to find a place in the Philippines that's not, that's not hosting a community. So um, we'd like to know how clean the waters are and what the flow uh, rates are kapag ano ba yung baseline flow niya and nafa-flood ba yung buong buong cave kapag kapag ka, kapag ka maulan na season and the table below uh, the, the table below uh, shows uh, our target outputs particular outputs that will be submitted to the uh, project leader for evaluation of uh, the other components of the project This one uh, on the left has already been done for um, yung Palawan St. Paul na caves. They've um, they've mapped out the 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 channel, the underground channel. This is something that we cannot do at this time unless of course there is a group in the program that would really map it out. But for us it's um it's uh, not part of the work. What we will do is to look at the inputs and outputs, so the outflow and where the water is coming from, and then uh, uh, computing um, water budget based on observations. But we will definitely tie up those observations to the geologic information, such as what are the rock types present in the area? Are there fault lines there that water can pass through, etc. And um, we're fortunate that uh, one of our colleagues is also working on a different uh, kind of problem um, in, within caves, and that is um, how do caves breathe? Um, in a way, we uh, treat caves like a living system. So um, Dr. Jack Perob and her husband have been studying how aeration in caves occurs. So I would like to turn you over to uh, Dr. Jack Perob for that part of the work. Magandang umaga po. Magandang umaga po sa inyo. So on, on this particular um, section, we will, I'll give you a brief, um, how would I say, um, introduction on cave and air. So, as we all know, caves breathe. And um, with this, uh, we have to consider the, the drivers. So the drivers normally, um, these are the gradient of temperature. If we talk about this, uh, our main, um, our main uh, aspects that we would like to, to, to check is the inside and the outside of the cave we're in. We normally monitor it daily. Uh, there's uh, even night and day. And then we would also like to look into the seasonal changes we're in. We can consider wet and dry. And of course, the trend in terms of climate change. Um, with the driver, the, the most um, interesting and challenging part is uh, our setting, which is in a tropical setting. 
We also have the pressure, yun, pag bumagyo po, there's air pressure drops. And then when there's heavy rain, there's this infiltration of water pushing down the air. So it has consequences on this particular um, uh, talk. I will just focus on, C on CO2 and radon. Of course, there are a lot of uh, parameters, but our interest is more mostly on, on these uh, parameters. And um, depending on the drivers and the pressures, this, that the levels of the CO2 and, uh, and radon will vary inside the cave. And um, this will affect uh, the, also the, in terms of water chemistry, alam naman po natin yun, may connection siya, which can um, deposit some lime scales or uh, dissolve the lime scales, de depending, on the, uh, depending on the situation, uh, which has a, a consequence in terms of the speleothems. This has impacts on us sa mga tao po and then sa, sa fauna. Uh, normally, uh, in terms of CO2, we don't like it when it's uh, of high, le high level, right? So um, depending, on the, on how the, the, depending on the breathing of the pig, <clears throat> CO2 can increase or, or decrease. CO2 also, in terms of um, biodive, can influence some um, bacteria and some fun fungus, or there's, uh, it can influ influence the fungal pro proliferation in the cave. Now, in terms of radon, um, we have to be in a certain level then po because uh, uh, Above the, above the limit of radon it, and, and then um, long exposure, it can be carcinogenic. So for radon, we normally, halimbawa sa ano natin po, sa normal environment, I mean sa, sa setting natin sa bahay and then sa, sa workplace natin, the breathable level is 100 vectorel per m cube. So above that, kailangan i-monitor na po natin yun. And then um, maybe there will be um, actions, uh, we will be needing actions after. And um, it has impacts also in terms of um, speleothems. It can be altered. Uh, the, the, the question here is that sometimes in the cave, it's not only the cave, but, but there's this particular interest. For example, yung mga historical artifacts. Baka meron po tayong mga historical na bones or may mga paintings that dated long, long time ago. We would also part to, to protect this as part of, the, um, of our patrimony. So, that, that how the caves breathe and how the ventilation goes, it can affect this um this artifacts. So the the that's um the um, knowing how how what what is uh, how how does the, the the cave ventilate is very important. So for this particular study, um uh, we have three objectives. So first is to assess, of course, the air quality parameters, and we will focus on the temperature that should be monitored throughout the year the CO2 um, in terms of limit of comfort, and then the radon, radon, uh, radon content. Uh, here, we said that the, the toxicity is around 300 um, vectorel per m cube, but um, the breathable level, you have to, as I have said, is 100 vectorel per, per meter cube. So we, we have to, to check this one. Secondly, is we want to establish the aerologic behavior of the cave in terms of cycles of ventilation, in terms of its capacity to renew in an annual basis, in terms of its ability to go back to the initial stage if there will be any perturbation. Thirdly, we would like to explore the effect of the intense event, lalo na in our setting. So if there's this heavy rains, if there's a pressure drop, and um, as, as Doc Day have mentioned, we have um, caves for ecotourism or potential ecotourism. So we would like also to check what can be the, the effect in terms of the presence of, of, of people. Now, how, how we do it, we normally conduct functional measures. So this is to estimate the range and variations of the parameters. And then temporal analysis is very important. Meron coming ano, a medium frequency if we would like, uh, this will just be one hour to, to every six hours. In terms yung pagita ng pag monitor. the second step, if the, the cave really needs this, is the high frequency. So the monitoring will be one minute uh, to, to 10 minute interval. And um, this temporal analysis will also consider, of course, the seasonal variation. Um, for the parameters that I have said, we have the temperature, CO2, and the radon. Temperature, normally it varies slightly, so around 1 over 100 in an hour. And um, we will be needing high resolution if, uh, if the cave, um, how will you say, depending on, the, on our interest. 
Uh, for example, if we would like this to connect on the proliferation of the um, of fungal pro proliferation, eventually, uh, eventually having an effect on these paleothems, we can use this uh, high precision. For CO2, um, the external atmosphere we all know is 0.04%, but in caves, it can reach 3.5%. Uh, um, the variation on intensity event can reach 0.1%. 0 in France, actually, um, so CO2 is mostly produced by, by, by the plants. And then depending on, on the activity, or we can monitor the, the, the variation, the, the level in terms of CO2, summer basha or winter basha. In the Philippines, we are suspecting that it can, we can have high production of CO2 throughout the years. So this is exciting for us. And um, in terms of radon, of course, this is produced by magmatic rocks and by clay. It varies depending on the, on the ventilation. It can reach 3,500 vectorel per met cube in um, an unventilated environment. So we really have to check this thing. Now, how do we do it? Um, we have the installation of the sensors, depending on the, the parameters. Meron tayong where, how, and when. Where, um, we have uh, most of the time two, two parts that are very interesting for us. It's inside the cave, of course, to assess the, the cave end member. And secondly, um, entrance, yung kusan nagmimit, yung air, considering as a mixing area. How, of course, we will make use of the, the sensors, um, but uh, this is a challenge because we have uh, the sensor should be placed uh, for a long time, so we need a place wherein it is safe from theft, from flood, and other unfortunate events. For the duration, it depends on our sensor. So with the temperature CO two, it can be left for for a month for continuous monitoring. Radon, radon as well um, for a week mostly. I, 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 I don't have for I, I cannot last my mind is cannot last for for a month. Pero a week can be safe. Um, we need uh, at least uh, a data per season, and then this will help the uh, this will help and uh, us understand the cave aerologic behavior. So, so this figure gives us an example of a very rough. Um, <laughs> drawing of Cavinti cave map when we went there we would uh, we we had a look on how where, where are the potential areas for placing this sensor now we have some example findings that based from our past studies uh, this is not from the philippines but i think that it can be very useful in terms of our study here so here is um um we we look into most in the temperature what we, uh, we, we are um, asking is, if a, a human enters the cave, how can that um, human um, affect the, the, the temperature and, and the CO2? So the measurements made for five days. And then on here, you, you see the yellow here, the yellow zone here, it's where the, the human entered. And we see that the temperature shows variation of 0.6% 0, uh, 0 in this period. Well, one person, of course, will not induce a lot of variation, but um, there's still a change, okay? And then imagine if we will have some more, okay? The, the next one is on the uh, measurement of uh, CO2. Here we would like to know if the cave is ventilated uh, during winter. So we have um, measurement made for a period of 20 minutes to three hours. So here it says that CO2 is measured around 0.06. So that for the CO2 in the environment, as I have said, it's 0.04 normally. So it's 1.5 times the atmosphere, the concentration of the atmosphere inside the cave. So meaning during this period, this is on winter 2019, the cave um, is still well, well ventilated. There's another study, it's in QSAC um, site in France, here we had uh, it's, uh, the, 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 the cave was monitored for around 15 years, monitoring the, the CO2 and temperature. So from here, we have as, uh, assessed the periods of air renewing of the, uh, in the cave and the periods of CO2 accumulation. Basically, what we can see here is that during cold season, you see there, um, the temperature, can, uh, there's, um, the air can get in. But during warm temperature, you can see that there's a, a sort of a, a trap there. The air just pass there and go back outside. So this is one of the, the interesting trends that we have found. 
Um, there's another cave, we call it a cave XX because we're talking about Radon. Um, this uh, here, uh, we, we saw that this cave presents similar variation in terms of CO2. But um, in December, CO2 decreased whereas radon um, remains high. So CO2 decreased because, there, uh, because of lower production. So radon here, uh, we can see that the red ones here can, can be higher than 300 decibel per m cube. As I have said, what, uh, for the breathable, if, you, if a person would like to enter the cave, it's just around 100 decibel per m cube. So here, because of that, it, um, the implication is that the government uh, told the, the people that um, visits should be in a short duration only, if, if really needed, to limit the exposure of the people in entering the cave with this amount of CO2 and radon. So there's, uh, I know that you, you know this famous Lasco cave. So based from our studies there, uh, we, we did continuous monitoring of CO2 temperature and water to assess the fine interactions between the envir environmental parameters and CO2. Here, we have found that temperature is the main driver, that pressure is uh, the next one, and long rainy period pushes the CO2 from the soil towards the cave. So leading to temporary very high CO2 um, values. There's another um, example of, uh, uh, this is again from in, in Lasco Cave in, the, in this site. Um, this is very interesting for us researchers because normally um, this specific cave is not really uh, open for, for visiting. They have, they made another cave that is for visiting. Yung kaparehas halos nito. Ginaya ni nila itong, itong Lasco Cave na to. Um, with this, um, this is only open for researchers. But um, we know that at a certain, um, a certain month, the CO2 level in this area will go up. So with, with, uh, with the cartography of CO2 inside the cave that uh, was made, we know when we can get in the cave and we know when we cannot get in the cave. So this is also imposed by the, the, um, the governing uh, bodies there in, in France. So these are just the examples of the, the researches and the outputs that we did that I think uh, we can use here in, in the Philippines. Thank you for, I'll go back to Dr. Day. I am actually done. <laughs> okay, Pop. Thank you so much, Pop. I'm Mami Shell. <laughs>